Wanga, you have written uh, around, about the subject, spoken about the subject many times, uh, about the subject of forgiveness, and it just seemed like a good starting point uh, to review some of your thoughts on the subject of forgiveness and just be interested in what are some of your thoughts on that. Thank you, Julian. Um, and first of all, welcome and greetings. The subject chosen, forgiveness, is the most interesting and complex of all the challenges that faces the sincere student of mysticism and of uh, spirituality. Forgiveness involves deeply the emotional system and deeply an invasion of self in terms of one perceiving that, they, that, that, that the self has been violated or perceive that uh, there is some disturbance within themselves that they cannot deal with and they attribute this, usually they attribute this to an individual, a condition, or something of that sort. Um, why is it so difficult for the average human being to forgive is a very interesting subject. Usually they are afraid that, that the individual or the condition may return if they forgive may return and attack them again and they will experience all of the chaos that they experienced in the first place. Another reason for them not wanting freely to forgive is that I don't understand why they did this to me or it is happening, so how can I forgive it if I don't understand it? Let me, let me, let me to, to, let's, to go back earlier perhaps, and it, uh, to try and dissect uh, back to your first remark about uh, people feeling uh, some violation. So to talk more about that, uh, so we can maybe better uh, put into a, under a microscope somewhat what actually is the experience that a person is feeling that forgiveness or, or, or holding a grudge or whatever the resentment is, is a reaction to. So if you were to dissect that more, what, what would you say about it? The emotional self, the emotional part of the individual is a very strong element. And they feel themselves completely isolated and anything that interferes with that sense of isolation, that sense of security, is challenged. In other words, if you speak an unkind word, it challenges the emotional system. Now, so well, let's say, well, why is it perceived as a challenge? So what, what, what would you say is going on, maybe from a psychological point of view, uh, that uh, makes that significant, that a person is saying something that uh, a person deems to be offensive. Why are they reacting to that? What, what is, would you say is going on? They're reacting to it because <clears throat> that perception of an invasion or an insult disturbs their inner balance. There's a disturbance of balance, and the balance calls things to, to come to focus cause a reaction within the individual. And, and the disturbance of balance represents what to them that produces that reaction of, of hurt and, and reaction to that? Usually, usually it is that something has been taken away or I am not honored and respected by others. So would you say when you really kind of get down to it, it feels like a threat to their well-being in some fashion, right. right? Absolutely. Some potential industry that in, uh, injury that might make them right. vulnerable, uh, uh, and so on. So that's their perhaps the uh, the kind of crux of why we react as we do yes. because it seems threatening to our welfare at some point and our natural uh, instincts toward self-preservation 
from a fairly mundane point of view, look to protect ourselves right. uh, from things that might harm us. Absolutely. Okay, and as you were saying, that there's the fear of one forgives that the behavior might be repeated. Right. right? So there's a defensiveness we put up as a guard in some fashion uh, uh, in response, perhaps. Is that absolutely, right? absolutely. And that's, and that's extremely important. <clears throat> now, you have to picture this based upon what is internal within the individual being attacked or perceived to be attacked. What is internal to them? What experiences have they had? How well are they stabilized in who they are and can add a self-protection without a reaction to their environment? So, Forgiveness requires one not to react violently to any reactions coming to them. Mysticism and spirituality are excellent <coughs> tools with which the individual can begin to deal with forgiveness. It is one of the most frequent challenges to the Ordinary individual, many battles and, and murders are, are occur because of this perception of an attack. And, and let's say they actually have been attacked. Lots of ways people attack one another, sometimes physically, sometimes emotionally, verbally, etc. Uh, uh, spirituality and mysticism teaches that, that there is something within you that really is a stabilizing force and that there is something within you that will perceive wrongly an environmental reaction. So what is focused on the attributes and, 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 and information and the development of a stable internal force within them so that they are not liable to any disturbance in their equilibrium. In other words, there is something within them that stabilizes them and causes them to react meaningfully to the environment. So, if you were to, to kind of distill uh, perhaps what you've said there, uh, so people feel a threat to their well-being in some fashion by someone's action. Uh, we take a defensive response to that. Uh, we feel somehow diminished. We have a defensive response to that. Uh, it seems to me what you're saying is, is a, as one has a a greater sense of, 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 let's say, centeredness, or recognizes that uh, one maintains one's wholeness, uh, then one doesn't have to respond or is not prone to respond the same way because one doesn't feel diminished. Absolutely. It reminds me, if it just do it, pardon me for a moment, it reminds me of the saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Right? But as children, when our parents or other people use that phrase, we think, well, oh, that's not true, I feel pain, I'm emotionally reacting. Uh, but it's literally true, uh, except for the sense that one somehow makes others' comments a reference point about oneself to oneself. Yes. Uh, so if one, if I followed you, if one has uh, more of a sense of that internal uh, resources, uh, one doesn't lose one sense of balance and therefore one doesn't feel injured. Good. Is that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful explanation of it. Now, what, what is going to help the individual develop those internal resources that one, protects themselves, and two, for them not to respond to the environment in a negative way? The basic teachings of spirituality and the basic teachings of, of mysticism tells us that there are spiritual laws 
that governs the individual and governs the universe. So the individual is not escaping or cannot escape those laws. First of all, the law of cause and effect, for instance, is one of those laws that, that affect humanity and the universe. What is the law of cause and effect? Meaning that if I set into motion a cause, I must experience the effect. The, uh, another law is that of love. If I am able to express the love that is within me, because the God is within me, the universe is within me, which is a, 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 an, an expression of love. If I'm able to express that, that not only protects me, but to help develop my inner faculties so that I can see with perfection what is going on in my environment and not accept a false perception. So all of the universal or spiritual laws that governs me, I must begin to study and reflect them. So if something happens in my environment, I first must go inward to see what has been going on that I am not aware of or that I can develop and, 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 and give a meaningful and truthful expression. Should I blame others for what I am experiencing? Or should I go inward and use the faculties that I have de developed in my studies? Go inward and see what have I done to bring about this action of this so-called false perception. If you go inward and use the inner faculties and discover that, oh, they are expressing exactly what I at once expressed. And hence, I am experiencing that which I created. And I can forgive that person and let them go to their own good and I will return to my own good, furthering developing a true interpretation of my environment and began to express love into my environment instead of expressing resentment and hate and separateness. One of the profound results of the study of mysticism and spirituality is to develop a sense of non-separateness. Slowly the individual began to realize I am a part of my brothers and my sisters and all of life. And slowly when that development occurs of non-separateness, then one views the environment differently because the inner faculties will, will readily remind you, oh, that is your brother, that is your sister. Give them respect, and respect will come to you. Let me then go back a little bit to what you were just saying. Uh, so looking at cause and effect in, in those things, uh, and how one acts in one's environment, and what does that generate? And it reminds me also of uh, the question, of, at least to put in the New Testament, uh, that individuals asked uh, uh, Jesus as he was teaching, uh, why was this man born blind? And his answer was, uh, and they questioned him, was it something he did or, or something his uh, uh, father did uh, or his forebearers did? And he answered, neither, but that God might be glorified. And that, to me, when I uh, reflected on that, uh, indicates uh, that sometimes the things that we encounter are simply part of our evolution 
uh, and to help us modify and evolve certain characteristics of ourselves uh, that aren't necessarily precipitated by a particular action that we took previously, but how do we bring about the evolution of the expression of the spiritual aspect of ourselves and the awareness you're referring to. So it isn't necessarily, it seems to me, always in my own experience and observation, uh, though obviously it's limited, uh, necessarily something that a person has done before, but how do I now move to another step of, of progress uh, which means that I have to change my behavior uh, and I'm getting things that are impinging uh, on me now because that, that behavior needs to be done. One thing that you began to see the big picture and what Christ was really saying, this individual is an expression of the manifestation of the spiritual laws. Now what does that mean? The laws of cause effect, the laws that governs reincarnation, the laws of love. So the law is being manifested and hence the glory of God. Mm -hmm. But part of that law we would say is evolution, right? Spiritual evolution. Right. So by definition, therefore things must change. They need to go and change in certain direction. It's the, but the caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Yes. Uh, it's not that a caterpillar is an imperfect butterfly. It uh, could be a perfect and wonderful caterpillar, but part of that evolution, right, is to take one certain things, go into a cocoon, all those kind of things, till it becomes a butterfly. Uh, and I just go at that a little bit because I think uh, you know, some of it is the progress of our own evolution. There's a saying by, I think it was uh, the French mystical philosopher Louis Claude de Saint-Martin, uh, who speaks of evil as, as simply the, the absence of certain conditions or the inertia. So if you want to build from a certain plane, uh, the effort it takes to go from this state to another state is effort, and that seems like resistance to us. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it's simply what you have to do to build to go to another state. Indeed, indeed, indeed. One must seriously study the process of reincarnation. What is it? Why does it occur? And one will see that reincarnation is an ongoing eternal action. You can't take a shot of one aspect of reincarnation and say, oh my goodness, he's a bad person, he's, oh, she's a good person, and so forth. Evolution is to evolve and perfect the individual. That's the whole purpose. It's to perfect the individual so that they can grow closer and closer and eventually reintegrate with their source reintegrate with the Creator. So evolution cannot be looked at, a person's act action should not be looked at as one shot and that defines them. When one develops a tendency to see the overall picture, one becomes impatient, one becomes more patient, one becomes non-judgmental and more loving and wish and hope and send courage and strength for the individual to keep on the path, keep on the path of evolution because you too will become the unfolding rose indicating and, and demonstrating perfection and all, within all of us is this beautiful bud which eventually unfolds, expressing itself to the golden sun. Now I want to come back to a little more, uh, 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 say a little more tangible kind of discussion about forgiveness again. So there's always the interesting discussion about forgiveness forgiving and forgetting. Yes. What, what, what's your, what are your views? 
one, one must be understanding of an individual's interpretation of forgiveness and start at a point where, where they are. So there is really no sound saying, no, no sound truth in saying that, oh, I can forgive you, but I won't forget. No, you haven't forgiven. So there's a process by which we suggest that you take in order to truly forgive the individual. And in truly forgiving the individual, forgetfulness, like darkness, would disappear because the light has occurred in the consciousness of the person. Let me ask you that. Uh, uh, because I think there's a metaphorical idea around that and there's a literal idea. And since uh, it is, uh, granted, the many things that happen in our lives that we've forgotten, right? We get tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of experiences since we were children, uh, most of which we cannot recall. Of course, with hypnosis and some other type of things, or something brings it back, we can recall it. So when you're talking about forget, uh, forgetting, uh, it would it, be likely a lot, most human beings aren't going to forget an event that took place in their life, particularly a prominent event or something that changed the, the course of their life in some fashion, unless they were struck on the head by a, a sharp object. They had a concussion and became a, 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 a suffered from amnesia. So, what do you, I, I presume you're not really meaning literally in every case that people are forgetting something that took place in their life, or are you? And if you're not, what do you mean? <laughs> Assuming that there was an experience in that person's early development or... or, or well, let's say it happened or, yesterday. Yeah. Or what? It happened yesterday. Okay. Now, part of what happened yesterday will go into the subconscious without your knowing. And you don't know what's in the subconscious. Some will remain in the intellect. In other words, your reasoning ability. But there are the always an element, a deeper element in experiences that go deep into the subconscious and remain there until something happens and it comes forth and expresses itself. In the study of spirituality and mysticism, there are techniques in which we send light into the subconscious and transform that which is hidden into expression of that which is right and good and productive. So the, the study of, of spirituality and mysticism is to transform that which is hidden, that which is literally hidden from you, transform it by, by study and by, and by practice, so, so that it reveals itself in the act of purification and in the act of establishing balance and harmony. I want to, I want to go back, though, to the uh, 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 seeing if there's some value in, in parsing between the metaphorical notion of forgetting and the actual. So, uh, uh, Someone uh, uh, you know, takes something from someone and, and does something with it that it wasn't the person's desire to do uh, with it, the, the original intention. Uh, and it happened last week. Uh, it you know, was, let's say, a material, physical thing. Uh, the person forgives them. They're their child, their friend, whatever. They forgive them. Are you imagining when you're saying forgetting that they cannot recall that that event happened when you're as you're, you know, putting forgiveness and forgetting together, uh, that they are unable to recall that event, uh, which would seem improbable. So, what when you're talking about forgetting, is there a, a sort of more metaphysic, metaphorical kind of point that perhaps uh, you're you're talking about than the actual inability to recall? Once, once the student realizes that the laws 
that governs humanity and the universe are ongoing laws and are intimately a part of themselves. So as a student realizes, my, I set this into motion. I first set this into motion, which now displeases me. It is I who first set it into motion. <laughs> and once, once, once they realize that they are a part of that which now they seek to forgive, they seek to forgive, because of these laws, then everything opens up. That I, why should I blame them for something that I set into motion unknowingly? And this is why I am studying the laws that govern humanity. And I will try my best and I will intend not to set anything in motion that I do not want to experience. So once I get the cause and that I am a part of it, who am I to forgive? Who am I to forgive? I caused it. Should I give, forgive myself? Yes. Forgive yourself. So when you when you refer to forget it, right? so you, really, you have forgotten. So you're, <laughs> no, you're really saying there because let's say there's some agent, right? Some act, some other external thing becomes a force to make us reflect on this point of growth, right? It's an external person, as you I think sometimes refer to. These are our messengers, right? They kind of are they're, they're bringing messages, right? right? So when you say forget really perhaps it's more not necessarily the inability to recall because it's likely something is, you know, unless you had amnesia you'd be able to recall, uh, but not to uh, let that weigh in the future against one's determination in dealing with that individual or that situation. Yes, uh, I mean, very so important, yes. It, it may be. But I want to go back a little bit uh, and, and only because I think sometimes when people looking at karma and reincarnation back to the at least my reflections on the story of the man born blind again. Right? We're all in this path of evolution, so why was he born blind? Not because something he did, or that his father or forebearers did, but that God might be glorified. So that to me suggests it's, it's part of the process of the caterpillar becoming the butterfly. Right? That evolution, those things that one must obtain and, and awareness that one must gain, in order to get to other points, so these experiences we, we encounter in many cases are about how do we grow to the next level because what seemed to be true and right to us at one point of our evolution now becomes a hindrance, right, Absolutely. at another point of, of, of mm -hmm. growth. Uh, so it can be both sides, both something one proactively did right, that creates a, an evolution, a, you know, a karmic response, as well as uh, the stuff that you have to, we have to put behind us, uh, perhaps, in order to get to another, another level of awareness. Yes. Until you have reached, you cannot understand anything that is above your consciousness. And that is why in, 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 in our studies, we always say, raise the consciousness. Then you understand more. Raise the consciousness. You understand even more. So the whole process of evolution and reincarnation is understood more and more as we raise our consciousness. It cannot be understood down here. And up here is really down here to up here. Right, absolutely. The there, 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 are, there are many realms on the ladder and all of them are connected. All of them are connected and all of them are important. The first realm is important as the tenth because the tenth now has the capacity to go down to number one and help them gain strength and courage to keep climbing. So forgiveness, forgiveness basically require an understanding of the laws that governs humanity and the universe. 
And once understand, once one understand the laws, then one can interpret through the laws why this has happened, what is the, what is the result of it. So, so might uh, one say maybe fairly universally about that, that this law of evolution, right, of our own development uh, is, is governing throughout. And so whether it seems like it's compensation for some past action, but that action that, or reaction we're getting is toward our evolution, or it's something that simply facilitates our further growth, it's, yes. it's somehow evolutionary. I want to ask you one, just to kind of close uh, on the topic, ask you your thoughts about uh, the person who holds on, who is in this state of non-forgiving. And, and uh, could you talk a little bit about uh, the benefit to that individual uh, when they do get to this point of forgiving? When a person holds on to that urge not to forgive, there are certain actions that take place in the body, biologically and physiologically, which attacks the immune system. Because that attitude and that energy is not in harmony with the laws of the body. So actually, scientists have now demonstrated that by not forgiving, that has created a neurochemical that actually destroys elements in the body, destroys the immune system, let's say. So any disease can, can come forth. So there is no, shall I say, good act or bad act. All of them are designed all of the, uh, of the actions are designed to increase one to the state of perfection. The, the caterpillar is in a state of becoming and that state of becoming is essential and necessary. We in our lives experience certain things in the state of becoming. And eventually, our consciousness expand and we, our perfection is increased and we become the butterfly. Now, where's the butterfly going now? <laughs> yeah, it, it, uh, um. The butterfly is just the physical, the physical expression not the spiritual. The, the butterfly has a spiritual life. Mm -hmm. But let, let us say, so if you take those atoms and they're decomposed when the butterfly dies and kind of be engaged in the formation right. of some other new expression, so uh, it is all becoming, and it, that kind of gets at, uh, can, can one be a perfect but caterpillar as well as yes. a perfect butterfly? Yes. Uh, and if, all, uh, if we take the human valuation out of it, there are somewhat different expressions and perhaps more robust expressions of the creativity of the cosmic and the universe and the intelligence uh, that underlies it. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. Yeah, uh, there was uh, one other thing I wanted to ask you. Uh, well, looking at the psychological aspects, it was interesting, you talked about the physical, physiological aspects around non-forgiveness. And it seemed to me, you know, when you observe in ourselves, as, as ourselves being the, the most obvious place to, to look, uh, that uh, when we when we are forgiven, we feel whole again because we feel somewhat diminished, and and I say we fill the void of of feeling diminished when a person, let's say, has harmed us in some way by our perception of the material or psychological. So we feel somewhat diminished that they have taken something from us. I think we kind of fill that with a righteous indignation. Right? So we kind of now I feel whole because well they harm me and blah blah blah. And there's the though there's this other point when you do forgive, right, that you've actually got a sense of wholeness back. Yes. And it's not having yes. to be filled with this yes. uh, kind of reactive yes. uh, emotion. Yes. Uh, and, and a self, the power. That's a self fulfillment. 
Yeah. And you, you, you initially, because you can even look at interactions with people, that you, when someone seem, you, we feel someone has harmed us or offended us, insulted us, what the case may be, there's a kind of psychological imbalance when we're interacting with that person uh, immediately after, you know, until this is resolved. When you get to feeling whole again, right, one doesn't feel that there right. is something they have of ours. Right. Even though the transgression took place, and it didn't eliminate the transgression took place, but the feeling that we had somehow been diminished or lost something in the process has right. been kind of uh, evaporated and feel restored, I would right. say. So. And, 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 and that we have learned something. The experience or the lesson plan, which allowed us now to relinquish any accusation to a person relinquish and the, and the whole burden and the whole burden gives us relief and freedom yeah, you thank them for taking your tv still on your tv <laughs> you're realizing too materialistic <laughs> well thanks uh, for for uh for listening. listening in on, on this conversation and uh, yeah. thank you as always <laughs>